let's have a look at a situation where an organization needs to decide between a qualitative and a quantitative approach. So the purpose of this video is to detail when exactly either of these approaches would be applicable. And I think the best way of doing so is maybe through reviewing some of the main points that I discussed in previous uh, videos. So qualitative risk analysis, as I mentioned, is used to assess the characteristics of individually identified risks and how these risks impact individual uh, project objectives. And I said uh, examples of project objectives would be time or maybe cost. Uh, in a quant qualitative risk analysis approach, we are looking at the impact of the risk. We are evaluating the probability of the risk. And we're doing that through the use of descriptive words. So we use terms such as high impact, if we look at impact, maybe low impact. When we look at probability, it's high probability, medium probability, low probability. So we're using these words, and even though some techniques, so for instance, um, AHB, we have a scale that converts descriptive words into numerical values. Generally speaking, it's it's qualitative risk analysis methods, they start off with descriptive uh, terms. Usually organizations, if they're, if they if they need to assess risks, then the first step for them um, is to adopt these qualitative approaches rather than start off with a quantitative approach. And it's because it allows us to populate their risk register. So if you have a risk register and you want to identify the risks that impact certain criteria that you guys have defined in an organization, so the project objectives, then you'd be looking at the risk register. And to populate that, you definitely need to adopt a qualitative approach. So uh, technically speaking, a qualitative approach is the way to start off with uh, in risk management. And then we move on to uh, quantitative approaches if we have the expertise and if we have the data. But again, a qualitative risk analysis method, that's a summary that you see in front of you on the screen. So you start off with selecting the risk criteria, so the main risk characteristics that the organization is looking for. You collect data, um, and that collection of data can be through interviews, can be through you know looking at historical projects that the organization has been involved in. And then you prioritize the risks. You categorize risk causes, so if there are uh, similarities between what causes these various risks, then you just categorize them into these uh, similar groups. And it makes it easier when it comes to uh, later on dealing with the risk. And finally, you document the results. So that's like ba a basic summary of what we had covered in a previous video. Now, quantitative risk analysis. So we've already talked about qualitative risk analysis, quantitative risk analysis methods. Uh, quantitative analysis is, these are techniques that um, allow us to understand the combined effect. So we're not looking at individual uh, individual risks and how they impact individual project objectives, but rather we're looking at how these uh, risks would impact the overall uh, project objectives that you have defined. So time and cost at the same time, for instance, uh, or you know time across you know various stages in a project. In 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 these cases, you'd be uh, utilizing quantitative risk analysis techniques. It's more data focused. So you need a lot of data and you need data where it's not uh, descriptive data, it's numerical data that you need. Okay, and in terms of the actual method itself, so you can see it on the screen in front of you, uh, you we use the prioritization of risks that we obtain from the qualitative risk analysis uh, method. And that's why I said, you know, organizations usually start with a qualitative approach. You then collect high quality data. When I say high quality, I mean specific data. You know, if you're looking at duration, um, we need to find the expected duration. You probably might have as well pessimistic and optimistic duration. So let's say an activity takes six days. Your optimistic uh, duration for that activity would be, let's say four days. And a pessimistic uh, duration 
for that particular activity would be 8. So you see the expected is 6 and it varies between 8 and um, 8 and you know the lower bound which is which is 4 or 5. Uh, so that's you know that's what we mean when we say collecting high quality risk data. So data that is very detailed in a sense and then we need to build a model. So in Monte Carlo simulation, for instance, we need to have that simulation model and we perform the analysis uh, on the model. So that's, you know, some general steps that we follow for any quantitative risk analysis approach. And when would you, we use the qualitative approach? So we've got a particular project and we're starting off that project. There's no uh, risk management process yet that had been undertaken. That's when you'd use qualitative uh, analysis. So a qualitative analysis approach would be used at the, as a starting point at the start of the project. You don't have enough numerical data. So in cases where you don't have enough numerical data on durations and, 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 and cost, etc., So you you tend to stick to a qualitative approach. And it's important that you utilize a qualitative risk analysis approach if you wanna populate your risk register. What about a quantitative analysis approach? For a quantitative analysis approach, if you've got sufficient data, so if the company has been involved in a lot of projects, uh, has a massive portfolio, uh, or you have access to, say, people that you can interview and get sufficient data out of, this is when you'd uh, utilize a quantitative analysis approach. It's a very in-depth analysis that you would be undertaking when it comes to quantitative analysis so it's not you know just you know descriptive terminology but there would be sophisticated uh, mathematical uh, a mathematical process that you'd have to undertake and that's why you have to have the expertise and you guys had had a look at you know certain examples that involved uh, let's say for instance the decision tree analysis approach and Monte Carlo simulation. And there's, you know, several steps that you need to be aware of and there's maths involved. So it's not as easy as a qualitative analysis procedure. Now, this is a very important question. What if you don't have data? What do you do in these cases? Uh, for instance, if you look at decision trees, we need to get the conditions. So these have to be provided as an input. We need to get the resulting impact for each scenario. So how much or how much impact is there going to be on your duration? How much impact is, is there going to be on your cost when you consider, you know, scenario one that has a certain probability or scenario two that has a different probability. So all of these are input in the decision tree. Um, to answer this question about, you know, lack of data, it's, you know, and none of these analysis approaches would work without the presence of data. So you can't, you have to start somewhere. And the first or the easiest point of starting for an organization that doesn't have any data is to interview people. So you interview people, interview the expertise. Um, these experts would then, you know, utilize their experiences to answer your query. So for instance, you can ask about, you know, the expected duration for a particular activity and they would provide that information. You can also rely on uh, similar statistics of, of, of projects. So if you've got, you know, projects that have been undertaken by other companies, say, and the results of these have been published, you know, statistics on completion date, um, the issues that uh, had arisen in that particular project, you can populate your risk register based on that. If you don't have access to people that to interview if you don't have access to historical projects of other organizations you can rely on the experience of people that you have in your organization to populate the risk register and remember the risk register you can always uh, update it so as you know additional risk uh, comes up in in various projects you can populate the risk register you also have to rely on research so you got to research uh, maybe, you know, the literature, the academic literature. Sometimes you have to use databases. So an example of that would be, uh, say, for instance, for cost, RS means or Rawlinson's in Australia. 
So it utilize these to get an idea of you know expected costs, expected durations, etc. But you have to start somewhere. So you have to have some sort of data to enable you to carry out the analysis.